I have a friend at work, let's just call him Dan, who is almost as big of a fan of the Andy Griffith show as I am. Lately this friend has been working his way through the early seasons of another classic television program, Leave it to Beaver, and he thought that it might be fun for me to spotlight a supporting character on that show who disappeared after the third season, Larry Mondello. Where'd he go and why? I will do my best to answer that question in a minute, but first, let's talk about Leave It to Beaver. Just like the Andy Griffith show, Leave It to Beaver frequently played in syndication while I was growing up, and as a result, over the years, I became well acquainted with the adventures of the Cleaver family. The show which debuted on CBS in 1957 switched over to ABC during its sophomore season and ran for six years in all. When the show concluded, it was still doing well in the ratings, but the boys were getting a bit older, and those involved with the show felt that it just made sense to leave while the show was on top. As you might expect, a lot had changed over the course of the show's six seasons. Not only had the boys Theodore the Beaver and his brother Wally matured, but the Beeves' best friend and primary mischief maker, Larry Mondello, just up and disappeared during the middle of the show's run. Larry was played by child actor Robert Rusty Stevens. Stevens was a natural in front of the camera. The thing that made him so darn special was that he actually seemed like a real kid. You really felt like Rusty was Larry. And it was easy to see why Larry might not always make the best of decisions. His father was always out of town. His mother, played by veteran actress Madge Blake, seemed a little older than your typical mom and a whole lot more tired. Yep, Larry really wore this poor lady out. I always enjoyed Madge as Larry's mom, primarily because she had also been in one of my all-time favorite shows. There she is. Madge played Aunt Harriet Cooper on ABC's Batman TV series. Just looking at this picture warms my heart. Sadly, Madge would pass away in 1969, shortly after Batman was canceled by the network. So anyway, let's get back to Larry, or more specifically Rusty. At some point during Leave it to Beaver's fourth season, it was announced that Rusty would not be returning. Some people said that Rusty's family had moved to the East Coast due to his father getting a new job, and for many years that was the story that a lot of us believed. It made sense. My friend, again let's call him Dan, said that he had heard that something else might have actually been the reason for Larry's sudden departure from the show. He said that it might have had something to do with the mom. And if you were to believe actress Barbara Billingsley, Rusty did leave the show because of his mother. Apparently, at some point, she had heard that Rusty's mom had terrorized the show's producers and that Rusty had been fired from the show because of her antics. Well, folks, let me just state for the record that this story, however, isn't true. How do I know? Well, because we've got the real story straight from the horse's mouth, or more accurately, straight from Rusty. You see, recently Rusty has begun sharing a few anecdotes about his time on Leave it to Beaver on the show's fan club Facebook page. If you're a fan of the show, I would highly recommend joining this group. If you love Leave it to Beaver, you'll find this group well worth your time. Anyway, one of the stories shared by Rusty is the real reason behind leaving the show. The truth, according to Rusty himself, is that as Larry Mondello became more popular on the show, he was signed to a contract by the show's producers. At the time, aside from the main cast members, he was the only other actor to be under contract. At first, Rusty loved spending most of his time at the studio, which was very different from what he did at the start. In the beginning, he would show up for a day's worth of work and then go home, go to a regular school and hang out with friends. However, once under contract, he would spend all of his time at the studio lot and truth be told, he really missed the social aspects of living a normal life. Anyway, for a while, Rusty just kept those feelings inside. But it became too much for a young boy to keep to himself, and eventually he told his parents just how he was feeling. 
Rusty admits that he's not exactly sure to what lengths his parents might have gone to help their son. Who knows what his mom or his dad said, but at the end of the day, the show's producers released him from his contract. As season four of Leave it to Beaver continued shooting, contrary to the myth that I mentioned earlier, Rusty and his family were still in California. It would be a couple of years later when the family finally packed their bags and headed back east. So what did Rusty do after that? Well, folks, he lived a normal life. He went to college, he served our country, and he was invited back to make multiple appearances when Leave it to Beaver was revived in the mid-80s. Like all of the actors, Rusty had grown up. However, unlike most of his co-stars, Rusty had done so outside of the scrutiny of the public eye, and if you ask me, and his parents, he was all the better for it. These days, Rusty lives a pretty peaceful life in a quiet little township back east with his wife, far away from the glitz and glamour of Hollywood. He still catches an episode or two of the show every now and again, but more than anything else, he just loves spending time with friends and family, which if you think about it, makes a ton of sense, because that was exactly the reason why Rusty left Larry Mondello behind in the first place. All right, one final pick. Let's go with Larry and his mom again. Who knows, maybe she is actually talking to Larry's dad on the phone there. He certainly wasn't at home. That dude was always traveling. Okay, that's it. Please share your memories in the comment section below, and while you're at it, please click on the thumbs up icon, and why not consider whether or not you'd like to subscribe to my channel. I talk about music, movies, and television, mostly from the 60s, 70s, and 80s. You know the good stuff. But most importantly, and as always, thank you so much for watching.